Summary of One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich by Alexander Solzhenitsyn In a Soviet work camp, Ivan Denisovich Shukov wakes up to the morning reveille at 5 o'clock in the morning. Shukov always gets up on time, but he has a fever and aches all over this morning. He decides to stay in bed a little longer to get some extra rest because he thinks that there will be a friendly guard on duty that morning. Just as Shukov is about to call in sick, his blanket is ripped off, and he sees that the Tartar, another guard, is now on duty. The Tartar lashes Shukov by locking him up alone for three days. The Tartar shows Shukov around the camp, and Shukov learns that he won't be sent to solitary confinement after all. Instead, he will be told to clean the floor of the officers' offices. They go by a group of guards who are checking the weather, which is minus 17.50 degrees. Shukov quickly takes off his shoes and cleans the floor. After that, he goes to breakfast in the mess hall. Fetyakov, another prisoner, saved Shukov's food for him. It was a soup made with black cabbage and bad fish. Shukov takes off his hat, pulls out his spoon, which he calls his baby, and starts to eat. Then Shukov goes to the sick bay to say he can't go to work that day. Kolia, the medical helper, tells Shukov that it's too late to say he's sick, he should have come the night before. He checks Shukov's fever and finds that it is not high enough to let him off work. Before the count comes, Shukov goes back to the barracks to meet up with his work crew. After getting his daily bread, Shukov cuts it in half and puts one half in his coat and the other half on top of his cushion. The guys are then sent outside into the cold, where they have to take off their jackets for the check. Bynovsky, one of the prisoners, has to spend 10 days alone because he was wearing too many clothes. But Shukov is happy to be searched because he knows he has nothing to hide. The gang then starts the hard march to work. As Shukov marches, his back hurts, and he starts to think about how far away he is from his family. He tells them that writing to them is pointless because he has nothing to say. He talks to his fellow inmates more than he talks to his family. He remembers the last letter his wife sent him. In it, she suggested that he go into rug dyeing, which is a new way for people in his town to make quick cash. This idea makes Shukov feel bad, because he would rather use his job skills to make money. When the inmates get to work, Shukov sees that Alyoshka, who is a religious Baptist, is smiling and seems glad to be there. The group's job is to work on a power plant. Tyron, who is in charge of Shukov's gang, Gang 104, tells Shukov and Kildigs to cover the windows of the power station to make it warmer. Shukov gets a trowel that he had hidden, and the guys get a roll of tarred paper that they had hidden and cover the windows. After that, Shukov is told to fix the stove. A prisoner named Gopchik who is only 15 years old helps Shukov. Gopchik asks Shukov to show him how to use a stolen piece of wire to make a spoon. At the same time, Tyron chooses to start putting bricks after lunch. The group takes a short break before lunch. Kildig says Shukov is almost done with his time in the camp, and Shukov says he was locked up because he was wrongly accused of being a spy during World War II. At lunch, Shukov gets a second serving of food, which is enough to fill him up. Shukov finds a piece of scrap metal in the snow on his way back to work and hides it. He plans to use it to make a knife. Before going back to work, the guys gather around the stove to get warm. Tyron talks about how he was wrongfully jailed because he was the son of a rich peasant. He is locked up without a good reason, just like the other convicts. As Shukov says, the men of Gang 104 look up to Tyron and work hard for him because he is a fair boss who cares about their well-being. The guys start to work on the power plant's wall. This is Pavlo, the assistant foreman. He works with the other guys, but he is not forced to. The men admire Shukov because he works with them, and men will do their best for a boss they like. As Shukov works, the hours go by quickly, and he is very proud of his abilities. Shukov stays late at work to make sure his work is solid and hide his trowel, even though he could get in trouble for being late for the count. Before he can get back to his gang for the count, the guards find that one of their members is missing, which stops the count. This saves Shukov. 
When the man, who had fallen asleep at work, is found, the other prisoners scold and beat him for wasting their time. When the prisoners get back to the camp, they are checked again. He asks Shukhov to help him look, but he quickly remembers the metal piece he has hidden in his glove. His prayer is answered when the guard doesn't find the metal. Thank goodness the guard doesn't find the illegal item. Shukhov offers to hold a spot in line at the parcel room for Caesar, a fellow prisoner who gets packages regularly, until he is freed. He does this so that he can get paid for his work. Shukhov goes to the lunch hall before Caesar comes to take his spot in line. The men are being led in pairs instead of alone, which is making a mess. Inside, Shukhov joins his group and is given extra bread for his hard work that day. He takes Caesar's food to the barracks when he's done eating. Since Caesar got a package, he lets Shukhov keep his dinner allowance. There is another count. After that, Shukhov goes to bed, even though there will soon be a second count. When the second roll call happens, Caesar freaks out because the things inside his package are now visible and will be stolen if he doesn't hide them. Shukhov says he will hide the package in his bunk. Shukhov then gets a bit of sausage and some cookies from Caesar. Shukhov thanks God before going to sleep for giving him another day. Alyoshka the Baptist hears him praying and starts to talk to Shukhov about God. He tells Shukhov that all a person should do is ask for food every day. He asks Alyoshka if he means his daily share, but Shukhov gets it wrong. He says it's about bread that feeds the heart, Alyoshka says. When Shukhov hears Alyoshka's message, he gives him one of the cookies Caesar sent him. He thinks back on his day and says it was almost good. At the end, the narrator says that Shukhov still had 3,653 days left in his term. About the author Alexander Solzhenitsyn was born in 1918 in Stavropol Krai, Russia. After his father died in a shooting accident, his mother raised him and encouraged his interest in books and science. Solzhenitsyn went to Rostov State University to study math and the Moscow Institute of Philosophy to study literature and history at the same time. During World War II, Solzhenitsyn served in the Red Army and started to have questions about the Soviet regime's moral roots. Solzhenitsyn was sent to a work camp in 1945 because he wrote hurtful things about Joseph Stalin in a letter to a friend. Before he was moved to a special camp for political prisoners, he was held in several others. There, he worked as a miner, carpenter, and manager. Solzhenitsyn was sent away after he was freed. During his time in jail and exile, Solzhenitsyn gave up his Marxist beliefs and slowly became a thoughtful Christian. Solzhenitsyn was cleared after Khrushchev's secret speech in 1956. He then went back to European Russia and started teaching during the day and writing at night. Solzhenitsyn's first story, One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisevich, came out in the popular Russian literary magazine Novi Mir in 1962. This made him famous as a writer in both the Soviet Union and the West. Even though Solzhenitsyn kept writing, his work was not published after Khrushchev was removed from power in 1964. After writing One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisevich, Solzhenitsyn wrote a lot of controversial works that caused a lot of trouble. The KGB even tried to kill him, and in the end, Russia took away his citizenship. He got his Russian citizenship back in 1990 and went back to live there until he died of heart failure in 2008. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.